Hey everyone, it's Saoirse, and last video we talked about my favorite books from 2023. This time we're going to talk about our 2024 reading goals. So please, before I get started, I want you to let me know in the comments, what are your reading goals? And if you're a writer, what are your writing goals for this year? And the way that I look at goals, they are just sort of hopeful guidelines, things to get us started, things to motivate us. We should never beat ourselves up if we set a goal of reading 50 books in the year and we only read 20. Don't beat yourself up over it. You, you have the right, I give you permission, if you can't, if you feel you can't give it to yourself, I give you permission to make a crazy lofty goal for this year, for your, both your reading and your writing, and to not feel bad about it if you don't make it to that goal. That's okay. Every little step that you take, every book you read, every line you write is more than reading or writing nothing. So let's just do it. Let's do it. Let's read things that we're excited about. Let's write things that we're excited about. And let's be nice to ourselves. With that being said, I think I'm going to set my goal for this year at 40 books. That seems to be a nice number that I, I tend to start out with. There was one year when I read 52. I was like, this is it. I'm going to do a book a week. Here we go. It was a hell of a lot of reading. And I probably only reached it because I was in grad school and part of being a creative writing major was reading a lot of books. So I had to read all these books. I mean, we were reading like two a week. There was no way I wasn't going to meet that goal. Um, but yeah, 40 seems sometimes reasonable. That was my goal last year and I only made it to 21. But let's try again. Why not? We can always, we can always change that goal. So I think I'll show you some of the new books that I've acquired recently. And all of us bookworms, I think, have this in common where we just sort of hoard books. And I, I've shown you before, I have this whole 10 foot shelf of books that I have not read. This is, there's three shelves here and then there are five in front of me. And that bottom one there, I, I, that's all my, all the books I've been collecting for years and haven't gotten to yet because they just, they pile up faster than I can read them, obviously. Like I cannot keep up with this. And then, um, you know, I get books as presents, which is awesome. People know that that's pretty much the only gift that I like to get. And um, I get bookstore gift cards and um, go to little free libraries. And, you know, anytime somebody's handing out a book, I'm like, I'll, I'll take it. So some of the books that I want to read this year that I've acquired, I'll show you. I've been um, exploring my interest in poetry a lot recently. My mom got me this for Christmas, Poetry Unbound. 50 poems to open your worlds. And this looks super interesting. Like you have the poem and then um, a little description about it. And I hope that this inspires me. I The way that I write both poetry and prose is I, I like to study the craft of it, but I like to do so loosely without the expectation that like anything has to follow certain rules. I'm never going to be the kind of poet that only writes sonnets or like anything that is so structured and has this this storied history of this is exactly how you do it. Um, I'm much more free verse and I really like experimental prose. Um, and yeah, I just think everybody should write the way that they want to, but it's great to like get a jumping off point and learn about other writers. <clears throat> Uh, this one I'm super excited about. Unmentionable. The Victorian Lady's Guide to Sex, Marriage, and Manners. So, Victorian era and sexuality are two of my main interests in life. So when I saw this book, I was like, oh my god, I have to have it. My mom got me that one for Christmas. And I just got this one with my gift card. The Brief and Frightening Reign of Phil by George Saunders. You guys know how much I love George Saunders. He is a brilliant short story writer. Um, he also has one novel, Lincoln and the Bardo, and I just, I could read his short story collections for the rest of my life. He's so freaking original and 
takes you to other places, but they're, they're like grounded in reality and usually have to deal with how bizarre modern American life is. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. I'm probably going to read that one next, actually. Got this one with my gift card. Um, my Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. I just found that I really loved Rebecca and Jamaica Inn and was kind of salty about like nobody really having forced me to read du Maurier ever. Like nobody was like, you gotta read this. I don't know why we're sleeping on du Maurier. Like these books are so ripping and haunting and well-written. Um, so I'm really hoping that this one lives up to the other two that I loved. And also stop making these covers like this. Stop it. Because you, making the covers look like they're these romance novels, I think it really sells her short because that's not, that is not what they are in my opinion. They're very um, spooky. I, I saw this at the Ripped Bodice bookstore in Brooklyn and I went there a couple times this year. Man, I was really in New York this year. Uh, but it's called Vagina Obscura, an anatomical voyage. And this is nonfiction. Um, and it looked, it just looked so interesting to me. Like, it really struck me. The fact that we're just not taught very much about our bodies. There's like this rudimentary little chapter that we do in, in like, fifth grade, seventh grade, whatever. And then that's kind of it. So the idea that like, we've all got certain body parts that we just don't know that much about and it's our body we should know about it i mean sometimes i think about all these slippery organs that are floating around inside my body and i'm like what are you even doing this is why i absolutely adored um the body by bill bryson that book oh my god it blew my mind like to read about all of these things that are happening inside me that i don't even know are happening I feel like I've been failed by the education system um, and it, it's just it shouldn't be such a mystery what's going on in there so this looks super interesting I hope it's good um, I got in the habit of buying literary journals so I've got a copy of the Harvard Review I read a couple copies of the Paris Review and one was great and one was just like over the top too pretentious even for me which is wild um, so I haven't tried Harvard Review yet, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I'm into any, you know, any collection of poetry, prose, essays, whatever, that's gonna be right up my alley usually. Um, this I found when I was in DC, they had like a free pop-up, pick up a book type thing, like, I, I don't, I think they were telling us to visit Seattle. Like that was part of the the draw. To, I don't know. They were trying to get us to visit Seattle, and it was like their tourism booth they'd set up, and part of that was giving away books. Um, and so, like, I think most of them were set in Seattle or written by people from there. I don't know, but this is, um, I believe it's nonfiction. It's by a metro driver um, in Seattle who describes just the, all the things that he has seen driving like can you imagine the stories that this person has i i'm really into stuff like that like slices of life from from people who really just see it all like see every bit of humanity at their worst usually um but also how we can have these incredible interactions that make us remember oh right like life is actually worth living isn't that just wild um so those are just a few things that, that i want to read because i have i could even if i read 52 books this year i wouldn't finish this shelf of unread books so it kind of feels like a very desperate hopeless situation but i try to think of it more as like exciting i've got so many books that i want to read like that's why i collected them but it gets to the point where a lot of these books are young adult books because I started collecting them when I was that age and I still haven't read them. So I feel a little stressed. There was this one scene in, in that show Two and a Half Men years ago where a character was like starting to get having like an existential crisis about how many books he had to read and like there was there are not enough bowel movements left to be able to like 
read all these books because like people read on the toilet. I don't know if you know that. Um, now that we have phones though, I think that's a dying art. But anyway, so that's for reading goals. Let's talk about writing goals now. I kind of, I gotta make a confession, I sort of failed y'all because I really acted like last year was going to be the year of writing and submitting things and instead it was the year of like heartbreak and personal um, growth and traveling and a lot of closure, but I did find a beautiful community of poets and that has really changed my life because I was so lost and lonely and then I really forced myself to go to these open mics and do my poetry and that is how I met all these great people and we're all so supportive of each other and so I go to open mics every month now so the thing is I haven't submitted you know my short stories I haven't been working on any of my novels um, but I've been writing a lot of spoken word poetry and going to open mics and hanging out with other writers and that's been feeding my soul and I think getting me back into the game because it is so easy and this is like therapy time it's so easy for me to just give up on everything and that's depression that is depression y'all it is um, a monster and so it makes me question you know what's the point why am I even writing I am just gonna die and do I want to spend my time writing stuff that probably won't go anywhere because there's a zillion writers in the world and there's not enough room at the top for all of us, but do I need to be at the top to be a writer? No. To be a writer, you just have to write. So some success would be great, but I can't get there if I don't try. And that's the thing that I just I have to do. I have to actually try and not be afraid of the ultimate rejection because I am just I feel so rejected in like every area of my life right now and that's tough like I'm a person who has faced a lot of rejection in a lot of areas for my whole life and man it is so hard to keep picking yourself back up and being like I am worthy of this that and the other when it is just rejection 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 so like, getting rejected for my writing doesn't bother me as much as other kinds of rejections, strangely. Um, but I know that, like, if I keep trying and it snowballs into, like, there are no successes and it's all rejections, that's gonna, it's gonna eat at me a little bit. So, but I can't have any successes if I don't try. So, you know, you gotta try. You got like, you're, I'm not dead yet. And that's something I've got to keep reminding myself. I am not dead yet. And as embarrassing and humiliating as existence feels to me most of the time, I've got to stop acting like nothing I do matters. And like there's no point to it. Because the point is to... the point. Well, there's no point. But we simply do things with the hopes that these things give us some sense of content, um, some sense of purpose, really. It's all about feeling like you have a purpose. So even if we don't actually, and nothing matters, um, acting like it does is the only way forward. So that being said, yeah, I'm gonna force myself to keep writing. This is my poetry notebook that I use to like copy down things when they're done, when I'm finished working on them, and then I use that at open mics if I haven't memorized something because man it is hard to memorize and like not go completely blank when you get in front of an audience but I managed to get through a couple poems like that without looking at anything last year so it'd be nice to work on that skill and figure out a balance between you know doing the spoken word stuff but also working on my short stories and submitting those um, because I don't really see myself as one or the other. You know, I don't think I want to be just one. I'm not, I'm not out there trying to be, like, a spoken word poet as a career, and, um, and I also don't want to just 
write things on the page and not perform. So it's I, there are these two sides of me that are fulfilled by these different things. So I'm going to keep doing all of those things. And now that I've found this community and some of these people are like actively working toward degrees in writing, even though I'm done with my degree in writing, being around them is kind of like firing up that creative flow again. So like we'll go to cafes and write together and, and talk about submissions and stuff. So more of that this year. I would like to keep being around other writers because I think that is what really feeds me and my creative process. Um, and I gotta stop being a dick to myself and just... I think it's about... I'm trying to be philosophical, it's not working. Um, it's about not putting so much pressure on myself but also caring enough to do the work. So it is a very fine balance where you have to care enough to actually write and to actually seek out places to submit and all that. Um, but don't take it all so seriously that it feels like the end-all be-all and if you fail you'll die. Um, that's what I'm trying to work on because I'm like, writing's all I've got. If I, if I'm actually bad at it and can't ever find success in it, then oh my god, what am I gonna do? And then I start spiraling. Um, yeah, I was having one of those one of those old spirals last night with my writer friend. Um, but what can you do? I think all creatives face this struggle. Uh, you know, what we do is subjective and when you're submitting things, you're submitting them to be approved by a certain person at a certain time and maybe that's not what they're into ever or right now. Maybe that's not the right person. It's, it's actually alarmingly close to like the other rejections in my life, which are often like relationship rejections. Um, it is subjective. Like, you can't make everybody like you. You're not for everyone. And you can't make everybody like your writing or your art. It's not for everyone. But we keep seeking the person that it is for, the people that will enjoy it. Um, and now I found these people who... I think like having me around as a friend, which is awesome, um, and something I was really missing, and and in sharing my writing more and getting really comfortable doing that, I'm getting a lot of great feedback that people actually do like it, and it, you know, not everybody does. I get some, whoo, some hella crazy comments on YouTube. Whoa, you guys, like, if you don't like it, I don't know, I can't, I've never even thought about making a mean comment on somebody else's video, but teach their own. Um, but yeah, no, I know some people do resonate with my writing and it's always been my, my aim to just, if I can reach one person and make that person feel less alone, then I've done it. That's what I want to do because that's what other writers have done for me and that I think is the whole point of sharing stories is, is connection to other people. As much as I, as a kid and like teenager and when I was angsty and all that, I, I wanted to like exist in a void and be fine and, and I hate other people and I don't need other people and I could live on a desert island and like that's how I want to exist. Just totally alone and content. But it turns out, crap, oh, we are a species that thrives on connection with each other. Ah, hate to admit because that means we actually got to make an effort. We can't just go sit in our cave and and be happy. Um, maybe some people can, but most of us need community. And for me, that's what writing is all about. So some reading goals, some writing goals, that's it. I'm going to peace out and get on with the rest of my day and try to find some motivation um, and some joy in a bleak state of mind. So yes, again, tell me what your goals are. And until I see you next time with, I'm not sure, maybe we'll talk some poetry. I've still got stuff from last year that we have not talked about yet. Um, but until then, happy reading and thanks for watching.